All vascular access types suffer wear and tear from use. Complications related to vascular access sites decrease the efficiency of hemodialysis and can even interrupt it altogether. In this lesson, we'll explore some of the common non-infectious vascular access complications associated with hemodialysis. Let's start with failure of the fistula to mature. Fistulas have a greater longevity, lower ongoing cost, and reduced risk of mechanical complications compared to grafts. However, fistulas must mature, meaning that the vein must dilate before this type of access can be used. A fistula that has poor flow at the first postoperative visit, usually one to two weeks after creation, needs a careful assessment by imaging to diagnose the problem. Revision of the access site might be required. Complications can also arise from problems with the blood flowing into the access, the inflow, or with the blood flowing back to the heart, the outflow. Stenoses might become apparent at places where the patient had previous venipunctures. The presence of poor pulse augmentation within the access can indicate an inflow problem. Outflow problems might be evidenced by extremity edema, indicating central vein obstruction, fistula hyperpulsatility, and lack of fistula collapse when raising the extremity. While on dialysis, abnormalities in direct flow measurements or inflow-outflow pressures may signal a problem. If there are multiple collateral branches in a vein draining the fistula, then these branches siphon off the increased venous flow, thereby lessening the fistula pressure that induces maturation. Treatment would be ligation of collateral branches. Patients are sometimes sent to the emergency department from the dialysis center with persistent or delayed access site bleeding. This usually occurs due to the needle punctures during hemodialysis, but can result from skin erosion overlying the access. In that case, you need to consider an access infection. If limited to a needle puncture, direct pressure over the site will usually stop the bleeding. If the bleeding cannot be stopped, a suture may be sufficient but the underlying cause for the prolonged bleeding should be investigated. Usually an access has low resistant venous outflow, but this may be altered by outflow stenosis or obstruction. Elevated outflow venous pressures would predispose to access site bleeding by causing increased back pressure. Outflow stenosis can also lead to recirculation or cleaning the same blood over and over instead of efficiently cleaning all the blood. This is indicated by the presence of hyperkalemia, or poor dialysis adequacy measures. A fistulogram is an x-ray procedure to look at the blood flow and check for blood clots or other blockages in the fistula. Contrast dye is used so the blood flow can be seen on x-ray. A fistulogram can be diagnostic and therapeutic since you can perform angioplasty, stent placement, or thrombectomy during the procedure once the cause for the access dysfunction is diagnosed. Thrombosis of the fistula can occur soon after its construction, or as a late complication. Patients should be taught to monitor their fistula daily. The diagnosis is made by the loss of a palpable pulse, thrill, brewy, and or aspiration of a clot when the site is punctured. Early thrombosis usually occurs from technical factors and almost always requires surgical revision, but can also be caused by inadvertent compression, such as during sleep. For grafts, the entire access should be thoroughly evaluated by imaging. Poor flow, such as caused by stenosis, usually precedes late thrombosis. But hypotension or hypercoagulability may also precipitate thrombosis. It is important to recognize a thrombosed access quickly so the patient can be seen and treated. Treatment for thrombosed fistulas and grafts typically involves either surgical thrombectomy or balloon angioplasty. It should be performed urgently to avoid the need for temporary access with a catheter. The incidence of hematomas in dialysis patients can be up to 0.2 per patient year. In a newly matured dialysis access, posterior wall punctures might occur leading to hematomas. Bleeding will usually stop with pressure, and the extravasated blood will diffuse into local tissue planes. These are usually reabsorbed and can be observed until they have resolved. Some units have instructions for patients to ice the hematoma for 10 minutes every hour while awake until the next session. During the next session, the dialysis technician will avoid the hematoma 
and use other areas along the fistula graft for needle puncture until the hematoma has resolved. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.